Hello, hello. Today we're going to talk about vertex form and its uses with graphing quadratic equations. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h plus k. And when we have an equation in this form, we can pull the vertex of h comma k. And our line of symmetry, also called our axis of symmetry, would be x equals h. And this is really helpful when we have an equation in this form. We can quickly look at it, identify the vertex, and identify the line of symmetry or axis of symmetry. So let's look at what a problem would look like. Let's say we have an equation given as y equals x squared minus 8x plus 11. And we're asked to use completing the square to change this into vertex form. So to complete the square, I want to start my problem by subtracting 11 from each side. Then I want to take half of negative 8. Well, half of negative 8 is negative 4, and negative 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add 16 to the left side and add 16 to the right side to keep my equation balanced. Then on the right side I have, in factored form, what would factor as a perfect square trinomial. Um, square the first, square the last, sine of the middle squared, and that would factor as x minus 4 quantity squared. Then on the left side, we just had negative 11 plus 16 combined to be plus 5. And then our last step to put this in vertex form would be to subtract 5 from each side. Now, just by looking at the problem, I could pull the vertex of 4 and negative 5. Notice how minus 4 is part of the original formula, so the x value is 4, not negative 4. And that's a very common error, so make sure you're looking at if this is a minus 4 here, or subtract 4, your x value will be positive 4. Minus 5, that stays the same sign, but this is really the formula is saying the opposite, or it's part of the formula given, so we have a positive 4 for the x value. Careful to watch out for those. Those are the tricky part. All right, uh, you guys can pause the video here. I want you to take both of these quadratic equations and change them into vertex form by completing the square. Pause the video, come back, check, see how you did. All right, welcome back. So on that first one, we want to subtract 3 from each side. Then we want to complete the square by adding 1 to each side. Then factored form on the right side of x squared minus 2x plus 1 is x minus 1 quantity squared. And when I added 1 to the left side, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Then my last step is to add 2 to each side, add 2 to each side, and I'm in vertex form. Let's try the one on the right side. We would subtract 25 from each side. Complete the square. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I need to add 9. If I add 9 on the right side, I add 9 on the left side. Then I can factor x squared plus 6x plus 9, like a perfect square trinomial, as x plus 3 quantity squared. Subtract 25 plus 9 is subtract 16. So y minus 16. And then my last step is to add 16 to each side. And that gets me into vertex form. So I want you guys to write down both of these problems. y equals x minus 1 quantity squared plus 2. And y equals x plus 3 quantity squared plus 16. And I want you guys to identify the vertex and the line of symmetry or axis of symmetry. Pause the video here. Come back. Let's see how you did all right, so on the first one, we have vertex is at 1, 2, and our line of symmetry is x equals 1. And the second one, we have a vertex at negative 3, 16, and our line of symmetry is x equals negative 3. So double check, make sure you got these x values correct, because remember, the signs are the opposite. We have a negative h for vertex form. All right, so now in some harder problems we run into with completing the square and changing the vertex form, uh, we have to pull out a common factor. So we have some similar steps to the last couple problems, but there's one additional harder step. So let's look at what one of those problems looks like. So I want to start to get into completing the square. I want to add 24 to each side. And then now I can't do completing the square with this 3 and 18, with these factors in front of the x. So I want to pull out a common factor of negative 3. If I pull out a negative 3, 
then I'm left with x squared plus 6x, I could complete the square. But I can't complete the square with these uh, factors in front of my lead coefficient of x squared. So now I'm going to ask myself, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So if I add 9 here, what is the impact on the problem? And this is where things get a little complicated, because putting a 9 here is not just adding 9 to this side, because it's a 9 times this negative 3. So the impact to the entire right side of the problem, by putting a 9 here, 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. I'm subtracting 27 on the right side. So to keep my equation balanced, I have to subtract 27 on the left side, which looks weird. I added 9, but my impact of adding 9 was negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. So to keep the equation balanced, I have to subtract 27 on the left side. So if you have highlighters, you like to use different colored pens, now is a great time to highlight that this is a tricky step. Watch out for that. Then completing it, much like we did on the other problems, we can... Uh, factor by completing the square. Then I have 24 minus 27 is negative 3. And then my last step, add 3 to each side. Then we're in vertex form. In vertex form, we can just identify the vertex at negative 3, 3. So um, be careful about what your impact is. If you've pulled out a factor and you put a number in, you need to make sure you're keeping your equation balanced. Make sure you're, cha you're doing whatever you did to the right side has the same impact on the left side. All right, I think you guys are ready to try one of those on your own. Try this one. Pause the video here, come back, see how you did. All right, so on this one, we want to start with subtract 3 from each side. Then the common factor we're going to pull out in this case, we're going to pull out a 2 before we complete the square. Then I'm left with x squared plus 6x. Well, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. If I add 9 to this side, what is my impact on the problem? Well, by adding a 9 on that side, I have 2 times 9 is 18. So I'm adding 18 to the right side, so I need to add 18 on the left side. Then I can, negative 3 plus 18 is 15. And then on this side, I can go ahead and complete the square. x plus 3 quantity squared. And my last step subtract 15 from each side, and I'm in vertex form. So when I'm in vertex form, my vertex would be negative 3, negative 15. Easy one to finish on. You guys try this one. Look at the quadratic in vertex form. Identify the vertex. Identify the line of symmetry. All right, easy one to finish on. Hopefully everybody got negative 3, 8. And our line of symmetry or axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. And I hope that helps you guys with your graphing quadratics by using vertex form. Have a great day.